Everyone knows about trig identities, but no one really talks about inverse trig identities. They do exist, and they're pretty cool. Let's start off with the minus x identities. Firstly, cos inverse. Okay, we want to find a nice formula for cos inverse minus x. How do we do that? We start off by letting it equal y. Just keep in mind that y is in 0 to pi, because that is the range of cos inverse. Okay, now we take cos of both sides, giving us minus x equals cos y. So that means x is equal to minus cos y. And we know that cos pi minus theta is equal to minus cos theta. And if you don't know that, check out the video in the description on trig identities. Okay, so we have this is equal to cos pi minus y. And now we want to take the cos inverse of both sides. But we just should state that pi minus y is also in the domain 0 to pi. So that means we can take cos inverse of both sides without any troubles. If you didn't understand that, check out the video in the description on the problem with the trig functions. Okay, so cos inverse x equals pi minus y, so y equals pi minus cos inverse x. Substituting back for y, we get cos inverse minus x is pi minus cos inverse x. So whenever you have cos inverse of minus x, you don't have to be confused by it. You can just write it in terms of cos inverse x like this. Let's do sine inverse now. Well, sine inverse is an odd function, but we can prove it like this. Firstly, we let it be equal to y, and just keep in mind that y is in minus pi on 2 to pi on 2, because that is the range of sine inverse. Okay, now we take sine of both sides, giving us minus x is equal to sine y. So x is equal to minus sine y. And we know that sine is an odd function, so we can take the negative sign inside, giving us x equals sine minus y. Okay, now we take sine inverse of both sides, and since minus y is in minus pi on 2 to pi on 2, this works out nicely. We get sine inverse x is equal to minus y. In other words, y is equal to minus sine inverse x, and so sine inverse minus x is equal to minus sine inverse x. So that's one way to show that sine inverse is an odd function. You can do a similar technique to show that tan inverse is an odd function, so I'll leave that to you. Now we have these three formulas, possibly the most important for inverse trigonometry. But the next three are just really cool. Let's try to find a formula for tan inverse a plus tan inverse b. Okay, how do we do that? We just let it be y, and this way we can take tan of both sides. Notice that we're going to have to use the angle sum formula for tan. So that would be tan of the first plus tan of the second divided by 1 minus the product. And this would just simplify to a plus b on 1 minus ab. We can take tan inverse of both sides, but we have to be careful. We don't know if y is always in minus pi on 2 to pi on 2. So we should just use the general solution for tan. Link in the description for a video on general solutions. If you have tan of y is equal to something, then y is equal to the inverse tan of that something plus k pi, where k is some integer. And now replacing y with what we had before, we get this formula. But we can actually go a bit further. We can find which values of k are possible. Let's look at the left hand side. Tan inverse a and tan inverse b are both in minus pi on 2 to pi on 2. So when you add them together, the result is in minus pi to pi. So I'm going to let this green arrow represent all possible values of the left hand side. How about the right hand side? Well, the tan inverse in the right hand side is in minus pi on 2 to pi on 2. And if we take k equals 0, we can have this red arrow representing the right-hand side. As you can see, the red and green overlap, so it means that it's possible for the left-hand side to be equal to the right-hand side if we take k equals 0. How about k equals 1? Well, that would just mean we're adding pi to this right-hand side. So that would mean shifting the red range rightwards by pi. That would look something like this. Notice that this k equals 1 red arrow still overlaps with the green arrow. So it's possible for there to be equality. However, if we take k equals 2, which would move it right by pi again, you see that there's no longer any overlap. It's impossible for these two equations to be equal if we take k equals 2. Similarly, k equals 3 or 4, etc. It's just going to move further away. There's not going to be any overlap. So for k greater than or equal to 2, this is not a true equation. You can apply the same idea for the negative side. So for k less than or equal to minus 2, it's also not going to be an equation. That means the only possible values of k are minus 1, 0, and 1. 
The value of k that you take depends on what a and b are. Obviously, this is in general, but if you have a and b as actual numbers that you're given, then you can find out the exact k value which satisfies this equation, just by considering ranges. So this is our grand formula, which allows you to add two inverse tans. Also, if you want tan inverse a minus tan inverse b, you can just replace b with minus b in this formula. Okay, next one is sine inverse x plus cos inverse x. The reason I made it off-centered is because I want to call it f of x. Why? Well, the derivative of sine inverse x is 1 on square root 1 minus x squared, and the derivative of cos inverse x is the negative of that. So when you differentiate this function, you just get 0. That means the function is never changing, especially since it's continuous and its derivative is 0. The only possibility is this function has to be a constant function, a horizontal line. So all we need to do to find out what this function actually is, is sub in a point. And for example, if we sub in x equals 0, we get pi on 2. So the function is pi on 2 at x equals 0, and since it's never changing, it's actually pi on 2 everywhere, at least in its domain. So sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is literally equal to pi on 2. What an amazing formula. You can do a similar thing for the function tan inverse 1 on x plus tan inverse x, and that would give you this formula. Don't be scared by the SGN, it just means sine, S-I-G-N. Basically, the sine of a positive number is 1, and the sine of a negative number is minus 1. And the sine of 0 is 0, but we're not taking x equals 0 here, so we don't need to worry about that. A more common form of this formula is when we take positive x values only and rearrange it. Which means if you ever see tan inverse 1 on x for a positive x, then it's literally just pi on 2 minus tan inverse x. It's nothing crazy. Okay, just to recap, these were the minus x formulas, and these were the last three. If you want to get good at inverse trigonometry, you really should know these formulas, because there's not much else that you can learn in this topic. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's completely free. And also, thank you everyone for 1k. Maybe we can get to 2k one day.